How many have your Bibles with you? Brother, I'm getting some reverb up here that's just ringing over and over. Praise God. If, if, you will, if you will turn in your Bibles to the second chapter of the book of Revelations. Praise God. Praise God. When you're there, say amen. Praise God. I want to talk to you today about something that's really, really on my heart. I want to tell you, I believe that Jesus Christ is returning soon. I believe with all my heart. I believe, I believe that, that many of us are going to still be here when the return of Jesus Christ takes place. Praise God. In, in the second chapter... Praise God. In the, in the second chapter of the, of the book of Revelation, Jesus sends a letter to the church. There we go. To the church at Ephesus. And he told them how much that he loved them. He writes seven letters. He appears to, to John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos. And the first letter is to the church at Ephesus. A lot of theologians, they say a lot of different things. They say this is seven dispensations of the churches. That may be true, but, but this is what I do know. God wrote, had this letter and put it in the hand of John the Revelator. And he said, I want you to take this to the church at Ephesus. He tells them how much that he loves them. But, uh, but after he gets through telling them how much that he loves them, Merle, I want you to watch what he said. In verse 4, starting in verse 4, he said, Nevertheless, he tells them, I, I love you. You're doing a lot of great things. I want to tell you today, church, you're doing a lot of great things. There's a lot of good things going on in your life. But watch what he said. He says, Nevertheless, he said, I have somewhat against thee. Why? Because you have left your first love. He's talking to the church. He's talking to the born again. He's talking to the sanctified. He's talking to men and women that have given their life to Jesus Christ. He, he, he said, I love you. He said, but you've left your first love. What he means by that, he said, they've lost their, their original feelings for Jesus Christ. How many remember when you were first saved? How many remember that feeling you had when you were first saved? Okay, about 12. Okay. How, can, how many of you remember when you were first married? 15 of you. Okay, praise God. Oh, man, y'all got great marriages. That's all I can tell you. Praise God. You need help? I ought to preach on... But anyway, praise God. But he says you've left your first love. You left your, you've lost your original passion for Jesus Christ. He's no longer first in your life. What he was saying, he said, he said, I love you. You're doing a lot of great things. But you're now beginning to put your desires and the affairs that are going on in your life before me. Get a hold of that. Now watch. And watch what he said. Verse 5, he says, now remember from whence you're fallen. Remember how far you strayed. Remember from whence you're fallen. And repent. And do your first works or else. Any of any ever remember when your mother or your father, especially your daddy, he said, boy, you better do this or else. Man, all of y'all need a good whooping. Praise God. Listen to me. Them, it's them or else's that turn me around, Jeff. Watch this. Now watch. He says, remember when you're falling and repent and do your first works or else. I will come unto you quickly and I'll remove the candlestick from out of its place. Now watch. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20, it tells us that the candlestick was the church. Let me just plow a little bit today. He'd removed the church's influence in the city. He said, church, you've done good. You've got a lot of good things going on. But it's time you repented. It's time you got back to what you were originally sent here to do. If not, I'll take your influence out of the city. 
If we look around this town, we can go right down th this road and you can see some large churches that today stand empty and stand in decay. Today, they are relics and reminders of other people's yesterday's values. Think about me now. And today, in here in Texarkana, we're not talking about another country. We're not talking about another part of the country. We're talking about here in Texarkana. There are churches on just about every street corner. Back when people actually had yellow pages. Ted, I looked them up and I, and I just, I mean, you could tell I was busy that day. I, 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 counted, I counted every church that was listed in the Yellow Pages. It's over 500 of them here in Texarkana. But listen to me. With a church on every corner, I, want to ask, I just want to ask this question. I want you to think of what is the church's influence in this town? What is, the, what is, what is Christianity's influence in this town? Here in Texarkana, do we have the influence to repeal the M-130 that is taking place on Arkansas side? Where that, where that uh, the city council just a few weeks ago, without, without going through proper procedure, approved, uh, approved a, 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 a bill that would say that pedophiles would be able to go into the bathroom with your children. Now watch this. Well, I just won't take them to those stores, okay? When it becomes law, it not only deals with the bathroom in those, in those stores, it, it, it also deals with those bathrooms in your public schools. Then it also, during PE and recess, it deals with the showers in those schools. But does the church... Will the church stand up for anything? Will the, will the people of God stand up with their values? And do we have the authority, even though we're on every street corner, do we have the authority to repeal that? Can I tell you today that the church lacked the authority to keep Texarkana and keep Wake Village dry? Because elections were held on a Saturday. And we had more important issues to deal with. Nationwide, we saw a presidential candidate. And he ran believing that if he stood on Christian values, that Christians would support him and vote him on him. Did you know he just dropped out of the race a few weeks back? Why? Because he realized that the Christian vote was not going to people with Christian values. Come on, church. Can I tell you something today? I'm not trying to get a bunch of amens or anything else, but Brother Larry, our values as a child of God must be non-negotiable. Come on. If we can't stand for something, we're going to fall for anything. Of the seven churches that were listed in the book of Revelation, Christ found fault with six of the seven. Watch what he, watch what he tells the Laodicean church in Revelation 3 and verse 16. Christ tells the Laodicean church that they've grown lukewarm. In other words, he's not as important in their life as they once were. I was drinking a cup of coffee the other day. Set it down, walked off, and did something. But I want to tell you, it didn't take long what was hot and good to become lukewarm and distasteful. Can I tell you, if you don't keep the same heat on it that once made it hot, hot, it will, it will become lukewarm. Praise God. Listen to me. The, the, the Laodicean church had grown lukewarm. And, and, and so God himself said, I will spew or I will vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, he, 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 says, he says, when a church becomes lukewarm, God himself says, I will reject that church or that body of people. Now watch this. 
In Romans chapter 1 and in verse 25, it, it tells us that many so-called churches and church leaders now cater more to the desires of the creature than to the creator. We're more concerned with being acceptable to the world than we are to be a, a place where the presence of God feels comfortable. Come on, church. Listen to me. Social drinking is now okay because the people want it, irregardless of what Scripture says. That's creature worship, not creator worship. LGBT rights. Oh, hang, hang on just a second. Go back. Go back. Go back. Look here. On a church sign, watch your advertisement. We're going to drink a little beer. We're going we're gonna to sing a few hymns. Hello. Come on, church. Our values can be non-negotiable because God says, I change not. And if we want him, we must draw near to him. Come on, church. Praise God. Listen to me. Listen to me. LGBT rights. Now, inside the church are an act of love and fairness, even though Scripture clearly calls it an abomination. Our values are changing. But the book doesn't change. And God doesn't change. Listen to me, church. Well, watch. Here's the church today. We'll believe it, but we want to be quiet and not say nothing about it because we may offend some people and we may run some people off. I don't want to offend no one. I don't want to run nobody off. But the number one person that I want to make sure is happy is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Praise God. Listen to me. Listen to me. In, in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 21, it talks about the parable of the sower. I, I, I love the parable of the sower because we ought to be out sowing the word of, of Jesus Christ. But listen, it, it, it says in verse, in verse 21, whoa. Well, don't back up word. Come on now. Praise God. He says, there's, there's a message there in the word backing up, but I don't know what it is. Praise God. But get that bold again, brother. Praise God. And you stay there. In the parable of the sower, watch this. He says, he says, he, he says they have no root in themselves. He's talking about a group of people inside the church that have no depth and do not know what the Word of God really teaches. I want to tell you something. The Word of God is just not about your feelings. If all you have is your feelings, your feelings will change. But listen to me. That Word produces a root. Praise God. I, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old story about the cedars of, of Lebanon. Uh, these cedars in, in Lebanon, Brother Daniel, they were huge trees. I mean, they, they were big trees. And they were, they were over 100 feet tall. And, 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 and there was a huge storm that, that, came, that came through that valley. And every one of those trees were knocked down. They were laying on the ground. And so some, some of the political leaders, Larry, he, he came by and they said, we need just to get rid of them because cause they're dead. But there was an old man that says, no, they're not dead because there's something you don't understand about those cedars of, of Lebanon. If they're 100 feet tall and they stick out and their branches are 100 feet out, he says, they're just as strong underground as they are above ground. He said, they've got a root in themselves and if you'll leave them alone, no matter what storm comes and knocks them down, they'll, they'll come back up. Can I tell you, they, six weeks later they came back and every tree that was laying down because it had a root system, it was was standing back up and it was growing and it was healthy again. I want to tell you something. He said, but there's a, the church, there's a part of the church that doesn't have no root. And they'll hang around. They'll endure for a while. They'll serve God for a while. They'll lift their hand for a while. They'll shout glory for a while. But as soon as some tribulation comes or, be, or, or because they're, they're, they're persecuted, because of the word, 
Because, watch this, there's, there's a part of the church that says, I will come to that church, I will serve God as long as I can keep what I have and don't have to give up anything. There's a, there's a, there's a group of the church that says, I'll, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to drop out of the church because, because by, being a, by being a child of God, it's hurting me in, in, the, in the world. It's hurting my business. But listen, he, 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 says, he says, I don't have any root in themselves. And, 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 and they enjoy Jesus. They jump up and down. They shout. And, and, and they're happy. But as soon as a problem comes or, or, or because something in the Word causes them to change their life or their way of living, they get offended. Come on, church. Jesus Christ is coming back. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Listen to me today. We got to get deep in God's word and we got to understand what the will of God is. And we have to understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. And, and church, and we got to stand because Jesus is coming back soon. Praise God. Listen to me. Listen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. I want to show you some things. I'm, I'm just, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Now watch. In Matthew 24, I've talked about this before, but I want you to understand. Jesus is there and he, in verse 3. His disciples come, come up to him and they ask him. He said, he said, how long is all this going to continue? How, how long until the end of the world is at hand? How long until you come back for your church? And Jesus begins to tell them the events that are going to proceed before he comes. So now watch. Jesus begins to tell his people. He says, listen, y'all are disciples. A disciple is a follower or learner. He's talking to the born again. He, Sister Pritchett, he says, he says these things are going to happen just before I return. Okay? Just before I, I, I return. Now watch this. As, as I've done a study, I'm, I, I can't do all of them today, but, but I want to tell you something. Every one of the signs that he's talking about here are now happening. Yeah. Now watch, now watch. Just really. In, 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 in the book of Ezekiel, you don't have to turn there, but you can write it down. In, in chapter 39 and in verse 4, it talks about this great battle that is going to take place at the end of the seven-year period. Okay. And in verse 4, he says, he, he says that all these armies will gather against Israel and God's going to defeat them. And watch this, what he says. he says. He says, when God defeats them, he says, I'm going to command or I'm going to give these ravenous birds of every sort. So what he does, he says, he, God says, I'm going to start gathering these flesh-eating birds because when all of those people are, are there and they're dead, I need a way to clean my, my land up. Now, if you'll look here, this is a golden eagle. This is a golden eagle. They have a nine-foot wingspan. Okay? Several years ago, keep that up there. Several years ago at the Golan Heights, which overlooks the, the Valley of Armageddon, these, these large birds, not this bird, but one just about like them. The, the golden eagle has a nine-foot wingspan. There was a bird called an eagle owl that has right at an eight to eight-and-a-half-foot wingspan. They're, they're, they're not native to, to that area. They started coming and landing on the Golan Heights. What happens with most eagles, most eagles only eat live, live animals, live, live meat. They won't eat carcasses unless they just get in bad, bad uh, health. But, but these eagle owls with these eight-foot wingspans, they will eat both live and dead carcasses. They're, they're not even from that part of the country. But, but several years ago, they started coming. They started gathering. The thing that, 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 that the is, Israeli... Uh, uh, people have found out is, is that on a natural situation, they lay one egg every two years. But something has happened up there on the Golan Heights. They're laying two eggs every year. Okay? The signs are happening everywhere. Now watch. Now I've got you in Matthew 24. Look down on verse 28. Jesus reiterates the same fact of the same scripture that he's talking about in Ezekiel 39, 4. But in Matthew 24 and 28, he, he, he says, wherever those carcasses are, 
the eagles will be gathered together. Now look, I'm going to show you a photograph that was taken September 29, 2015. That is not flies on, on, a, on a window screen. That is 1,500 eagle owls flying over the Golan Heights with eight-foot wingspan. Now listen, church. My arms stuck out here are just a little over seven feet. 1,500 of them. That, that, was taken, that was taken less than a year ago. And the migration patterns that took place this year, it's heavier than it was. Come on, church. Signs of the times. Signs of the times. Now the word tells me in Matthew 24. Look in Matthew 24 verse 32. He said, I want you to learn the parable of the fig tree. He's not talking about a real fig tree. When he's talking about the fig tree, he's talking about the nation of Israel. If I had had time, I could show you all the scriptures that would correlate it and let you know that. I'm asking you to trust me on that one. He says, learn the, the parable of the fig tree. When the fig tree's branch is yet tender, you know what it does? It puts forth leaves. And when you see leaves on that fig branch, what do we know? It's springtime. Summer's coming. Okay? Now Jesus says, verse 33 says, Likewise, when you see all these things, all these signs taking place. Now what was the question they asked him? Lord, when is the end of time? Now watch this, David. He says, when you see all these things, these signs taking place, know that it's near. It's ready to knock at the door. Now watch, verse 34, he says, and I'm going to tell you that this generation, he wasn't talking about the generation that, that is standing there talking. He's talking about the generation that sees those signs that we just talked about will not pass until everything I've just told you is fulfilled. Watch this. Now watch. Israel become a nation on Friday, May 14th, 1948. Are you with me? In the book of Psalms, in the 90th verse, I'm going to put all this together real quickly. In the book of Psalms, 90th verse, in the 90th chapter, the 10th verse, it declares, see, three times in Scripture does it declare that God has either set or changed man's lifespan? Three times. The last one being in Psalms chapter 90 and verse 10. And what it says there, the days or years are three score and ten. Well, a score is 20. Let's do math. 20. Whew, boy, y'all are quick. 60. And what is 10 plus 60? Y'all sure? Okay, 70. And if by reason of strength you're healthier, you've, had, you've taken care of yourself, you've exercised, you've had good medical, whatever, by reason of strength, then there'll be four score. 20, 20, 20, 20, 80. Now watch this. That's God's promise. Now some of you say, oh, I've done outlived. I oh, know, calm down. It's on average. Watch this. But we're two years away from that 70-year mark. Are you, are you with me, church? I want to do something. I want to offend you. If you're under the age of 70, would you lift your hands? That's most of them. Praise God. Willie, you're... you're Sister there, she's over 70. Praise God. Okay. okay. Oh, well, you got a baby, so I'll, I'll let you be under 70. So most of the people are under 70. So watch this. I'm going to show you a few more things. Just a second. Jesus is coming in your lifetime. I want you, I want you to get a hold of that. Jesus is coming in your lifetime. Now watch. Now watch. Oh, I know. Oh, but Brother Hal. 
I know what Matthew 24, 36 says. I, I know what it says. It says that no man knows what, the day nor the hour. So I'm not predicting. What I'm telling you is, it's time that we got our house in order because Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. He says we won't know the day nor the hour. But listen to me. Right here he told us the times and the seasons so that we could watch. Now watch. This is how it's going to happen. Matthew 24 and verse 40 is, is so clear. It, it, it's, it's not going to come. It's not going to be on CNN noon at, at, at 12 midnight tonight. Jesus is coming. Nostradamus on your thing when you're getting uh, 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 your, your groceries that says that he's got an ancient prediction. It's not going to happen like that. The scripture says that, that there'll be like two men. And they're both working in the same field, working in the same factory, working at the same job. And it's going to happen in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. And one will be taken and one will be left. There will not be time to get ready. We must stay ready. Come on. Listen to me. Now, right after chapter 24, Jesus keeps te teaching. Remember, original scripture was not written in chapter and verse. It was, later, it was later instituted so we would know how to get to different passages. But, but he's teaching in 24, and just a few verses later, he goes in and he, he starts talking about the church when he tells them to get ready, Sister Mary. And there he starts talking about the ten virgins in chapter 25. And the ten virgins are talking about the church. They're all virgins. They're all pure. Okay? He's talking about churches. He's talking about individuals. They're pure. They're born again. They've been saved. But he says now they've gone to sleep. They all had lamps because they once had fire. But they've gone to sleep. And their fire has gone out. Why Jesus tell us in, in, in Revelation 3, he said, he, he, he said when you get lukewarm, your fire goes out. He says, he says uh-oh, it's up. I'll spew you out. I'll vomit you out. I won't accept you. Listen to me. Old Testament, in the, in, uh, uh, the Lord says in, in the Ten Commandments, he, he, he says, I'm a jealous God. He says, I'm a jealous God. God is still jealous today. I can just see me telling my wife, Teresa, I love you. Nobody else in my life. But on Tuesdays, can I go see my girlfriend? I'd have worse than that band-aid on me. I sure would. Praise God. <laughs> Listen to me. She's not putting up with that. But how come we think that the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, will put up with that? He said, I'm a jealous God. I'll have no other gods before me. If he's not first, he refuses to be second. And even if you put him first, he refuses for there to be a second. Come on, church. Listen to me. But in Matthew 25, he says half the church is asleep. That's what he's telling us. He, he said that the ten virgins, half of them are asleep. And half of them are trying to get ready because they hear that he's coming. So, so, so they're going to try to get ready. You read Matthew 25. While they're trying to get ready, they are left behind. Are you with me, church? Now watch, now watch. In Noah's day, well, God wouldn't destroy. He, God's a God of love. Listen to me. In Noah's day, he preached. He told them that the, that the flood was coming. But they chose not to come in. The scripture says, if you read it, that God at the appointed time shut the ark door. And when God shut it, no man could open it. When God shut the door, no one could come in after that, and they all perished. Even though there were signs all around them. In Noah's, in Noah's day, as, as he was working, see, see, God didn't want them to perish. He was showing them signs. These different animals, they would come up, and, 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 and as, as they saw these different animals come up, they just looked, and, and, and Noah would say, man, that animal's not from around here. 
That ain't, I, I've never seen that. And, 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 and so people would look at that and they say, well, times are changing. People, people just, times are changing. All these signs, well, well, listen, people are just getting smarter. They're inventing things. These animals, they're just walking up. They're just migrating. They've never migrated before. God was giving them signs. God's not willing that any should perish. And it's a lie that's been perpetrated on the church. It says that once you get saved, and then if you walk away, you'll still be saved forever. That's a lie that's been perpetrated on the church. Praise God. When Israel went into, into Egypt... And when they knew that the, that the death angel w- was about to pass over, they put the blood on the doorpost. And watch what the Lord told them. He said, when he comes over tonight, it doesn't matter if you have blood on your doorpost. You're not safe. Unless you're inside the house. We got so many in the church world today. But they've applied blood into the doorpost. But now they're playing games outside the house. If we don't stay under the blood, the blood doesn't protect us. Come on, church. Now watch. Let me just, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go much longer. Probably will, though. The scripture says that after the rapture takes place, there's going to be some signs that take place, okay? Now watch, I want to give you the, I'm gonna give you some of those signs. Now un, un, understand this. Things that are going to be instituted have to be developed ahead of time to be instituted. Get a hold of that. Look in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Watch this. Watch this. And it says, this is after the rapture. That because uh, they're going to cause both, the, both the, the, the small ones and the big ones, the rich ones and the poor ones, the free and the bond. And they're going to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now watch that. Now, now, and now watch. Watch this. I'm fixing to show you something. Run, run that video. Listen to me. That's ready to be introduced. You see that little bracelet up there? That's your new handheld cell phone device. You see that screen? That is a holographic screen that it will now shoot upon your hand. Isn't that neat technology? I wouldn't mind having a phone like that. Hello. Just what I mean, ju- ju- just look now watch. Go back to, to that scripture. Two thousand years ago, before listen to me, they didn't have TVs. They didn't have radios. They didn't know what a cellular phone was. When I was growing up and no Dick Tracy on the funny papers. Funny paper listen to me. Well, I, was, I grew up in an age that had funny papers on Sunday. And they were colored. I'm telling you, they were colored. I mean, if you got a color, oh boy, I tell you what, I like the funny papers. And old Dick Tracy, he was this super futuristic cop, and he had this, he had a wristband, and he, boy, he could talk on it. Man, there was another guy, and he, he, he was on the show, and I was going, oh, oh, Maxwell Smart. He pulled his shoe off. He had, a t- he, had a, he had a rotary dial phone in his shoe. <laughs> but old Dick now, I'll tell you, old Dick could talk into his hand, but watch. And I thought that'd be so great. But back before TV, before radio or anything, 2,000 years ago, a man that was in prison on a rock island got a word from God that says there's going to come a day after I come. That old Satan's going to cause everyone to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Wow. You, you can show that video again. I just want it to sink in. While you're reading this, looking at this, 
Revelation 16 and 2 talks about something that's real good. Just, just show that. Revelation 16 and 2, it, it says that during the tribulation period, when he pours out his, vial, his vials, he's talking about his vials, it's his first vial he pours out. He says, he says that, 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 that there will come, that, that there will be a grievous sore that will take place on people's arms, on their foreheads and all. You know the only thing that's holding this thing back right now and from being approved? I, I, I will, because I'm not a real educated man, on that band, there is a real high-powered battery that causes that holographic feature to come off on your wrist. That battery is so powerful, it's a little bit unstable. And the Food and Drug Administration is concerned because, as of right now, it's unstable. And if that battery should mess up, and it should blow up because it could, it would put a huge sore where? Right on your hand. Listen to me. How does a man who's never seen anything sitting on a rock island know all this? Unless the king of kings is speaking to him. Come on, church. Praise God. Listen to me. In, in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, it talks to those that were beheaded for the witness of, of Jesus. We see that all the time now. Just a few years ago, that, that was unheard of. But now we've seen upon the, the news w w with this rise of ISIS and this Muslim religion that is coming up, how, how that they have beheaded several people. Well, I want to tell you, as I read in the Jezreel News and I read in the, in the Jerusalem Post Thursday of this week, May 19th, your ISIS men right there, I chose not to show the video because of the graphic nature of it and the grotesqueness of it. They took 25 Christians this past Thursday and dipped them in nitric acid. Now watch this. You say, well, what's so bad about that? They left them in there and within a matter of minutes, their whole body was eaten up and dissolved. Come on, church. And yet a man who'd been forgotten, who'd been rejected by society, John the Revelator, heard a voice behind him. He turned around and the Almighty God come. And he said, I want to give you a letter to the seven churches. And after you give them to this, I want to tell you to wake them up because they're asleep. Because they're dwelling at ease. They've forgotten their first love. No longer am I number one in their life. Some are going to be beheaded. They're going to take a mark. Now watch. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. He says there's going to come a time that everyone is going to... There's a devil in the house. Okay, praise God. Okay. That was not going to get this one. He says, when they... Now watch this. Who, who is they? When the, when the political leaders of the day say peace and safety. When they believe that they've come up with a way to have peace in the Middle East. When Israel can have peace. He says, know this. Sudden destruction is going to come upon them. And it's going to be just like a woman when she's having a child, when she has labor pains. And there's no way they're going to get out of that. This very year, our president, President Obama, he inked a nuclear deal with Iran that, by his point of view, says makes Israel and the world a safer place. The two leading candidates that will take President Obama's place. Miss Hillary Clinton, she says that she, her goal is to extend Obama's policies for four more years. The other gentleman who, who is a leading pretend, contender to be our president, Donald Trump, said just this week, he reiterated these, these words this week, I wrote these words down, when talking about Israel, Israel can pay and they can pay big to defend themselves. 
it's not going to be receiving foreign aid from the United States. So, now watch, now watch. Put this next picture up. You know what this is a picture of? This is a picture of rockets that, that a group of people called Hezbollah now has in their possession. Hezbollah is the, is the radical Islamic group that is trying to take over Israel. Where did they get the, this newest type of rockets? When, when the Iranians got their money unfrozen from the United States, and not only did we give them the money that was unfrozen, we also paid interest on that money also. We gave, we gave Iran over $300 billion. Iran took that money and they gave it to Hezbollah. And Hezbollah took that money and bought those rockets. Which are now aimed at Israel. So much for peace and safety. Holly, come on up. Can I tell you, I, I could continue on, continue on. I know I'm boring you, so I won't, I won't keep. But the, the word declares that in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye, Jesus Christ is going to come back. And the church is asleep. His ways are more important than our ways. And many are not and will not be ready. Why? Many in the church, they say, I'm ready. I got baptized at eight. But listen to me. When his values are not our values, we're not ready. So church, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm real, real. If Jesus came back today, five minutes after he come back, what would you be doing? Are you 100% sure that the God who is jealous... Would accept you? Come on, church. In Noah's day, they let me in. I messed up. I just I thought I had more time. But that door never was opened. In Moses' day, when that death angel came over, there were consequences. You see, church, when the trump of God sounds, if you miss that time, you miss eternity. There is a devil's hell. It's real. I'm not here to scare you today. I'm not going to tell you how bad hell is. I'm going to tell you it's worse than you think it is. But I want to tell you, Jesus is coming back. And I want to tell you today that Jesus wants to keep you from all that. I want you to stand with me today. See, the Word says <clears throat> that those that make a lie, no. The Scripture says that not one sin shall enter heaven. Wow. Well, Brother Howe, I just believe that God understands me. My response to that, well, I just don't believe you understand Him. I want to tell you that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. And I don't want you to come to Him because you're afraid. I want you to come to him because you realize that maybe you've let some things get between you and him. I want to tell you that Jesus loves you so very much. And he's willing to forgive everything.
if you'll just come to him today. I'm just going to open these altars right now. Would you come to him today? And you say, well, I'm not sure, Brother How, if I'm ready. Then you need to come to him today. You see, in all the years that me and my wife have been married, if I feel like that she may be upset about something or not happy, I don't let her get over it. I go talk to her. Why? Because I love her. Because she means more to me than anything. So today, if you're not sure, you need to come to Jesus. Would you come? Come on, church. Everybody pray right now. If you're not sure that you're ready to meet Jesus, I want to tell you, the signs are everywhere. We don't know the day, the time, the hour. He could come today. He could come, he could come in two years. He could come in ten years. I don't know. But I'm not willing to take a chance. Tell me, when was the last time you saw 1,500 huge birds flying right overhead and just, just circling over and over? God sent some signs. They explained them away in Noah's day. They explained them away in Israel's day. But if you could go back in time, those men would have told you, I wish I'd have listened. Would you come? Would you come? Praise God. Now I want to open the altar for all the, all the believers right now. Listen to me. I want you to come today. I want you to just come. Let's just kneel this on and say, Lord, keep me ready. Lord, keep me ready. Keep me ready, Father. Keep me ready, Father. I don't want to be turned away. The word says, take heed while you stand, lest you fall. Light my fire. Light my fire. in our society. I gotta let my influence. It's not time to back out of things. It's not time to compromise.
things that we think are hidden, our Heavenly Father already sees. David, he knew he had sinned. He knew he had fallen short. He repented before you, Lord. He said, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Don't take your presence from me, Father. He said, try my reins, examine me. That's why he was a man after your heart. Not that he was perfect, but, but that he knew that if he had you, he had to get rid of everything else. Let us be men and women after your heart. That we'll acknowledge our failures before you. That we'll go back and resharpen our sword. So that our lives can matter for you again. So that our influence would not diminish. So that one day we wouldn't drive by this place and it would be, it'd be run down. It would be deserted. Don't take your candlestick. Don't take our influence. Let us shine our light. Because Lord, we're more concerned, I'm more concerned with you being pleased than with the masses being pleased. Bless my brothers and sisters today. I believe they're the best you've got anywhere, Lord. Love them, speak to them. Speak into them.